this. And here's an example on the addition rule. One more example. A blood bank catalogs the types of blood given by donors during the last five days. A donor is selected at random. What's the probability that the donor has type O or type A? And this is the table, guys. So probability of type O or type A. There's an OR. So according to the rule, guys, probability of A or B, it is probability of the first event, type O, plus probability of the second event, type B, minus probability of the two events happening at the same time. But let me ask you a question, guys. Is it possible to find someone who is type O and type A at the same time? No. So that means this one is going to be what? Zero. Type A, guys, blood and type O blood are mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. Maybe one can give to the other, but you can't have, it's one type. It's a unique type. Each one of us has a unique type. It can be two. The blood that runs through the streams, it's just one of a one unique type. So, okay. So the probability of type O or type A turns out to be probability of type O or probability plus probability of type A. Okay, can you guys tell me what is the probability of selecting someone who has type O? Look at the table. The grand total is 409, guys. What goes in the numerator? We need to, the probability that would favor someone who is type O. 184. 184, that is correct. That's the grand total, guys. For, for type O plus. So that's a zero here. What is the probability of selecting someone who has type A? 164. Over, yeah. Over 409. Minus 409. Uh, over 409. A minus zero, you don't have to put it, guys. It's still gonna be, you cannot find someone who is type O and type A at the same time. So you just add them up. So that would be 348 divided by 409. Do you divide, if you're doing homework online and it says, give me three decimal places divided. If not, just leave it, that would be acceptable. B, what's the probability that selecting a donor who has type B or negative? RH negative. Okay, so here's how we start, guys. Probability of B or RH negative. By definition, this is probability of the first event plus probability of the second event minus probability of RB and RH negative. Okay, and that would be what? You could have someone with type B and negative at the same time. So that, that can happen. So that's not a zero. And you're gonna see it in the table, guys. The reason why O and A were mutually exclusive because they both belong to the same two columns. But look here, guys, when you do B, which is a column, and RH negative, which is a row, so there's an intersection. Two columns will never intersect, but a column and a row will intersect for sure. Okay. What is the probability of selecting a donor who has type B? 45. Yes, over? 409. Exactly. Plus? Are they each negative? 65. Yeah, excellent. You do the grand total. Minus? Now we need B and RH negative. Look what you do, guys. You do B like this, a vertical line, RH negative, a horizontal line, and where the two meet would be your number, which 
just eight. Eight. That's it. So it's a 102 divided by 409. That's the answer. Okay, any questions? Let me add one more question, guys. Uh, so part C. What's the probability of selecting a donor who is type A and positive? Type A and positive. I didn't say or positive and positive. What would that be? 139. 139 over 409, exactly. What about if I say type A or positive? So I'm just gonna add this, C. Or R H plus. Once it comes to the OR, guys, you have the formula. You have to use the formula because of the OR. So you have to do type A, which is what? 164. Yeah. Over 409 plus H, RH plus 344. 344, exactly. Minus. If you don't do the minus here, guys, you will go over 100%, which is impossible. So there must be a minus. You, it's for sure. A and RH plus. So A and RH plus, if you wanted to do it, I'll use the red A and other H positive. So they meet right here. Minus 139 over 409. And you guys, you can simply use your calculator just to do this. So I got 164 plus 344 minus order of operations 139. I get 369 divided by 409. Here's another question. What's the probability of selecting a donor who has negative type or H negative? I don't care whether it's O, B, A, B, A, B, etc. over 409. Exactly. Very good. What's the probability of selecting someone who is type B? I don't care whether it is a plus or minus. Either a plus or minus is good, just type B. 45. 45 over 409, exactly. Okay. Very good, guys. And the last part. This is section 3.4 that we're working on. It's very short, easy. Uh, uh, section. So let's introduce this section to you. On Monday, guys, when I introduced this chapter, I introduced something with an exclamation mark, like a five with an exclamation mark. And we say we call this factorial, and this is red. We read it like this five, five factorial. And five factorial guys means one times two times three times four times five. You're just multiplying two times three is six times four is 24 times five, it's 120. One factorial guys, for your information, turns out to be one. And zero factorial is also one. So if you ever come up with an answer of zero factorial, it is also one. And I'll explain that in a little bit why it turns one. One. Uh, 20 factorial, guys, you might need a calculator. This is a very, very large number. You can't imagine how large this number until you try to do it. 
So quick question. Yes. Why did the zero equal one when zero times zero is zero? No, zero factorial is different. I'm going to show you later once I do uh, the definition why it turns out to be one. So one factorial is one and zero factorial is one. And you will see that the demonstration in a second. Uh, 20 factorial means one times two times three times four times five. And you guys, if you're underestimating what the number is going to be, try to do it on your calculator. It's going to be very, very large number. That's why we're not going to do one, two, three. I'm going to show you how the calculator computes this and uh, using shortcuts you know, on the calculator. So the first thing I would like to do now, let's say you're doing a homework problem and there is a question to do nine factorial. Just do this, what's the answer? I mean, you can do one times two times three times four, but I think you would prefer to show you a shortcut, how you do it, you know, just in a few seconds. So that's the first step on the calculator in chapter three. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna clear my screen. So first of all, you go to math. No, first of all, you put a nine. We need nine factorials. So put nine on the home screen. And I have some short videos, guys, that are available just to do those things, you know, not an entire one hour or two hour lecture, just to show you how to compute the factorial. So you put the nine on the home screen and you go to math. Okay, guys, given that you're studying chapter three now and it's titled probability, where, what do you think I should scroll to? Look at it. Look at the headings. Is it PRB? PRB, probability. That's what your intuition should tell you. Okay. And do you guys see the factorial symbol? Do you see it where the factorial symbol is? It's number what? Four. Four. Enter. Oops, what did I do? I think I choose something different. So I'll put nine again. Math. And number four. Well, I went to five. Yep. And there you go. And now press enter one more time. And you're ready to see the answer. There's the answer, guys. 362,880. If you multiply one by two, by three, by four, by five, by six, by seven, by eight, by nine, look how exponentially, not just it increases. It's a huge number. Um, one factorial, let's try one factorial. It's one, because it's one just, so let me show you what. And then I'm gonna show you the zero factorial in a second. I mean, you forget what the zero factorial is, no big deal. The calculator can always remind you. That's a one. Let's do zero factorial. So put the zero here. And math. So we're going to go to math. And then scroll to probability, PRB. Just the PRB, it stands for probability. That should remind you this is the chapter that we are doing. one. But guys, imagine you do 25 factorial. I hope the calculator will not hold now. Can still do it. Watch. Do you guys know what this number is? What does it mean? There's E25 at the very end. What's your interpretation? You do 10 and then to the power of 25. Exactly. That means you have to do move the decimal point 25 digits to the right. And since I don't have 25 digits to the right, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have to add 15 more zeros. I cannot read this number, guys. I cannot read it. It's it's so massive that it can't read it. And this is only 25 factorial. And sometimes you try a large number factorial, the calculator will hold, will not even be able to process it because it's huge, it's so large. So this is both the factorial. Now the question probably when I ask why we're learning the factorial, so we're gonna come uh, to this right now. Okay. 
here's the example that I'm going to give you to explain um, factorials. Okay, we have a round table that seats 10 people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, you invite nine people for dinner. And they start showing up. And you ask people to seat themselves. So the first person arrives, you ask him to seat him or herself. How many choices does that person have as far as available seats? First person out yeah. of 10. 10 seats, okay. So the person has 10 choices. He can sit anywhere he wants or she wants. So the first person sits down, the next person arrives. And she or he is asked to seat him or herself. How many choices does the next person have? He or she is going to notice that the other person has been seating, the first person has been seated. So how many choices does he have? Two. Why two? We, the first person arrive and... Nine. Seat. Nine seats. This person can sit here. Let's say this uh, the first person occupy this seat. The other person can do here, there, there. They have nine choices. Then the third person arrives. How many choices does the third person have? Eight. Eight. Then you guys, you see what's going on. Who is the person who has the last seat and the last choice? Only one choice. Unfortunately, it's the host because you have to seat other people and you sit last. When you go to the table, the nine people are seated already. So you only have one seat left. So you only have one choice. And that's why you should understand guys uh it is one the question for this what i did here in how many ways you can see 10 people around a table of 10 and the number of ways guys to see 10 people around the, uh, the table of 10 it's done this way the first person gets 10 choices the second person gets nine cho uh, choices the third eight seven six and so on if you want to put them all together so if the first person gets 10 choices and the next person get nine choices. It's a multiplication, it's a multiplication, it's a multiplication, 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 six, five, sorry, four, three, two, and one. And as far as factorial, guys, what would this be if I want to write it as a factorial? 10 factorial? Yep. It is a 10 factorial. So if you guys have a table of 10 and you want to see in how many ways you can see 10 people around this table, let's figure it out. You're going to be surprised how large this number is. So it's 10 factorial. 10. And then go to math. So you put the 10 first. You need to put the 10 first. Probability. I know many students get shocked when see how many ways you can see uh, 3,628,800 ways to see 10 people around one table of 10. So imagine if you have more than one table. Seating arrangement, guys, the combination are so, so large. So this is an example of how to use factorials. I'm going to give you another example that we can do by hand. Let's say a table that seats three people. Okay, in how many ways we can see the uh, three people around the table of three? It's a three factorial. What's a three factorial, guys? One times two times, times two three, times. which is what? Six. Well, let me do the six ways for you and tell me if I miss anything. So let's call uh, the guests A, B, C. So here's one choice. A sets next B and C here. Let's, let's do another choice now. A 
C and then D. Uh, okay, what's uh, a third choice? This is a fixed chair, guys. We cannot move the chairs here. What would you put in here? B, A, C. B, A, C. Okay, we didn't do this. Oh, no, we did. I, I need to keep... No, let me redo it. it. Just make sure the seats. I don't change the seats. I, I change the seats. So let me just do it in a way that I don't change seats. All right. Like this. So we got ABC as one choice. That's good. Let's do another one. And I put ACB. Okay, that's the third, the second choice. We have to get three or six choices, guys. We can do more. Okay, what do you suggest now for the third one? BCA. Okay, so you want B here. CA, okay, that's good. Let's do a fourth one. You should run out of choices once we're done with this. BAC. BAC, yes. And that's the four, five now. EAB. What is it? EAB. You can't use B twice. CAB. Oh, CAB. CAB, yeah, that's a choice. And last one, guys. CBA. CBA, we didn't do CBA, yes, you're correct. That's it. Don't try to think of other choices. You will not come up with other choices, guys, because the formula tells me the answer should be three factorial. And three factorial, guys, is one times two times three, six. And I did say, I usually don't do a larger example with the students, guys, because if I do four factorial, it's 24 choices, it takes forever to do it. I just do very small uh, example. What about, guys, if you have a table of two? How many choices are there to see two people around a table of two? Two. Two, yeah. Sam and John. Sam sits here, John sits there. Or John sits here, and Sam sits here. Uh, there. Just two choices, guys. That's it. And you should believe that two factorial. The two factorial means two. That explains it. All right. So six factorial, guys, means one times two times three times four times five times six. Four factorial times two times three times four, which is 24. And this is 720 if you do uh, the math. OK. Um, let me tell you what next one. Just a couple more definitions that will be done with this chapter. I have four letters, guys, A, B, C, D. I want you to help me with this. I want to select the three letters from the group. The order is not important in how I select them. I could, if I want like A, B, C, whether A comes first or B comes first, it doesn't matter as long as I get the A, B, C. So order is not important. So we need, in how many ways? We can select three letters. Order is not important. In seating arrangement, guys, order is important. It's important who sits next to who. So guys, let's see the different ways to select. So I have four students, let's say four students, and I wanted three of them. In how many ways I can select, guys, three out of four students? And it doesn't matter whom I call first, you know, just to be in the group. So can you give me the possible choices? Give me first three letters that you would say. ABC. Okay, so ABC, that's one. 
Give me another choice. BCD. BCD, that's the second one. Okay. CDA. ACD, okay. There's one more, guys, and you will not be able to come up with any more. So you took student A with the student B with student C. That's a group. That's fine. Then you took student second and third and fourth students. That's good. Then you took the first, the third, and the fourth. That's good. There's one more. CB, no. CBA? What is it? CDA already there. Oh, yeah. CD. Okay, I got something in the chat. ABD, yes. We haven't done first, second, and fourth. ABD. Now, look, guys, when I do this in class, some students will tell me, what about ACB, Mr. Bazzi? And I tell him, no, it's already there. I said, no, we don't see it. But I said, the order is not important. So ABC, guys, is the same as ACB, is the same as BAC, is the same as CAB. It's the same three students. Who comes first, it doesn't matter in the group as long as we get them. So there are four choices. One, two, three, four. So there are four ways to select the three students from a group of four students where the order is not important. Now, guys, this can get ugly if I give you 10 letters and I ask you how many ways you can select the three letters. So there must be a formula to do this, and I'm going to show you the formula right now. This is called, guys, combination. And you use the letter C for the combination, C. I have originally four letters, and I needed to choose a three. And we write it like this, four, choose a three. And the answer, guys, should be four. And I'm going to show you how the calculator does this. Watch. So to use your calculator, let's say in the homework online, it says find four C3. You just put four on the main screen, and then you go to math, and then you go to probability, just like you did before. And can you guys guess what number I'm gonna go and press? Three. Three, it's NCR. N stands, guys, for the total number of objects, and R is how many of you choosing. So in my example, N is the four, and R is the three. Watch how easy it is. And now guys, the calculator wants you to put the R, the three, and you should expect the answer to be a four. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the lottery, not just, and show you how many possible combinations uh, are there. If there was no Powerball. So you pick, uh, six day, six numbers. I don't know out of how many. Uh, does anyone know exactly how many uh, you pick from? I think it's 49 for the Powerball, but I don't remember. Let's say six out of 64 possible uh, numbers. So let, me, let me show you how many possible tickets you can buy if you want to buy all possible tickets. So look, you put 64 first, guys. And then you go to math. And then you go NCR. And then you put six. So in how many ways you can choose six numbers out of 64? What are all the possible combinations? And you press enter. And can you see guys, read the number for me? 74,974,368,000. So 974,368. So there are about 75 million combinations. 
You know, when I did this question uh, before, a student told me, well, if the, if the jackpot is, let's say, 300 million or 500 million, if someone has $75 million, why doesn't this person go and buy all the tickets and he will be a winner? Well, first of all, guys, there is no technology that can process all those number of tickets in a matter of a day or two. Plus, there is no technology also that we can pull out all the possible different combinations. Uh, the machines will not be able to do that. And the scary part, even if you buy, even if you buy all the tickets, what about if somebody else wins? So you have to share the prize, you know, just with another person. So for the Powerball, guys, let me show you how the, we can compute how many possible tickets and why that your chance of winning is so low. I think there are 49 numbers for the first five, and then you pick five. So we're gonna go to math number and watch guys that's interesting you'll see how many possible combinations are there five these are your choices for the first five now you have to pick the power ball and it's i think it's out of probably 16 uh, numbers so let me see so we have to do 16 and then math one you choose one and then you multiply those numbers as so the 16 times one nine zero six eight eight four i think there are more combinations than this more than 30 millions uh, so probably it's not 16, I'm not sure uh, what the number, but what I'm trying to show you guys that the NCR formula is the formula that they can use uh, to determine how many possible combinations uh, are there. So one possible question on the homework guys, let's say you see a question in the book that says there are 25 students and how many way you can select the groups of 10 students. So look what you do. We just put 25 on the home screen right here. And when he says order is not important, and then you go to math. Oops, sorry. And then NCR. And then you want to select the groups of 10, just put 10 here. And look how many groups are possible, guys. It's a 3,268,760 different groups from a group of 25 students. These are the possible combinations. So it's a huge uh, number. Okay. So for a combination, this is the formula, guys. It's called NCR. I'm going to write it down, show it to you. You see, it says without regard of order, the order is not important. And for the calculator, you just go to math. And uh, you just enter the enter N on the home screen. Enter N on home screen first. Math. Then PRB, then NCR, and then enter R, and then enter. This is how you get the answer for NCR. Okay. Now, what is permutation? I think, guys, if you notice when you use when I use the calculator, let me just show you. Let's say I put 10 here on the screen and go to math. There are NCR and there is NPR. And this is the last one that you will learn. Uh, what does that P means? Okay, let me tell you what P means. Permutations. P stands for permutation. I have four letters, A, B, C, D, guys. I want to select the three letters. Order is important. 
So what comes first matters, whom I select first. Let's say I have a group of four students and I wanna select the three students. The first the students I select will be a president of the club. The second one will be the vice president and the third one will be the secretary. So it does matter who shows up first in the group. So the order is important. What I like you guys to help me out with is count, you know, just the possibilities, all those possibilities. So can you tell me the choices? Let's do it. So we need a three and the order is important. I'll start A, B, C. Who can give me another combination? B, C, A. B, C, A. Okay, there's more that has to do with ABC. Let's finish the ACB. ABC. ACB, you said? ACD. Okay, ACD goes here. Okay. There is more here for those three. You did ABC, you did BCA. What else can you do? CAB. What is it? CAB. You cannot repeat the B twice. You cannot choose the same. BDA. Okay. BDA right here. What else? No, I said C D A. Oh, C D A, okay, right here. There's four more guys with A B C with only A B C. C A B. Okay, I got C B A. Okay, C A B, C B A, yes. And I got the students who said C B A. Okay, there's two more right here. Just flip those letters, guys. Okay, let's see. CAB, okay, we did that. CBA, we did that. ACB. ACB, excellent. One more with B. You did BCA, what else can you do? BAC. Very good, that's six. Same thing here, ACD, CDA, ADC, CAD. I want somebody to give me the other two guys. So I'm done with the A's, I'm done with the C's, now the D's. DAC. And what's the next one? BCA. Yeah, that's another six. Okay. BDA. BAD. DAB, guys. DBA and ABD and ADB. Now, maybe our students will tell me these are the same letters, Mr. Bezzi. Yes, they are, but I said the order is important. So the first person who is selected is gonna be a different activity than the second and the third. President, vice president, secretary, look here. The president is B, but the vice president is A, whereas the vice president here is D and so on and so forth. So we did, now we have B, C, D, and six choices, guys. B, D, C, C, D, D, C, D, D, uh, what else? Uh, D, B, C, and B, C, D. Can you count them all together, guys? How many all together? Six, 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 six. What's the total? 24. Yep. And now you want to see how the formula can do it for you. Okay. If the order matters, guys, you don't use the C, you use the P. So I have four letters, and I want to select the three, but the order matters. So I go and do a four P three. And watch this. You put four on the home screen. Oops. Here. Four on the home screen, watch. It's very easy. You go to math. And I do encourage you to use calculator. That's fine. You can do all those combinations using the calculator. And then NPR and three. If I don't get 24, either the calculator is wrong or I have to quit my job. So let's see. Let's see if I'm safe here. Oh, let's see. It's 24. But imagine, guys, you have to count all of this by hand. This calculator, you know, just will take care uh, of it. Okay. Let's uh, do an example here. And the formula for permutation, guys, it's NPR. And you 
use technology. So let's say you want to do 4B3. Let me show you the commands. Enter 4 on home screen. Uh, then map. Then NPR. Enter 3. And then enter. And that should give you 24. Okay, here's an example, guys, uh, to do this. 43 race cars started the 2007 Daytona 500. How many ways can the cars finish first, second, and third? Is the order important, guys, in a race? Tell me yes or no. What was the question? Is the order important in a car race? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> it's all about the order. Who comes first? The one who show up first is going to be number one. The, the one who shows up second next is going to be the second winner and the third winner. So you guys agree with me that the order is important. So this is a permutation. We have 43, so N is 43. And we're looking only for the first the three cars who finish. So my R is three, guys. So if you want to figure out in how many ways the, the first three cars will finish first, second, and third, it will be a 43 P3. And if you want to figure it out, we can do it right here. 43 on the home screen. And then math. And then probability, and then NPR, and three. It's seventy four thousand forty six. If he says in how many ways, guys, you can select the three cards from forty three, but the order is not important, you don't use P, you use C, and it will be a lot higher, you know, than what we got right here. So that's why bidding, you know, just on a winning car and who finished first, who finished second, who finished third, guys, it's not an easy game to win. There are 74,000 possibilities, you know, just of three. Unless if you know that for sure from experience that this particular car is going to finish first, second, third, you can bid on it. But it's a very tough game with the number of choices that you can see uh, right here. So. This concludes almost uh, everything that we needed to do in this chapter. And what I'm going to do, guys, for the practice exercises, I'm going to create a video, just so I'm going to stop this now. This is the last page. I'm going to create a short 10-15 minute video just for the practice exercises. and. Uh,